Okay. Um, I'm just going to do the, the straight up that you stole my line earlier today, that this is a bit of a tongue in cheek, because who could possibly suggest that we know how to deal with uncertainty as if it were that simple, right? Okay. Um, I do evidence synthesis. That's what I do every day. And in my job, what I have to do is assign a strength of evidence uh, rating to it that says how confident or not confident, uncertain I am with that evidence. And I do this because I'm very interested in developing a sense of clarity around our decision making. That is, what is it that we are deciding based on evidence? What are we deciding based on values and preferences? I trust evidence, and I trust it to change as much as humans do. We are complex systems, and we work with complex problems. And because of these wicked problems, there is a level of irreducible uncertainty to them. So I want to be provocative today and ask everyone here to pull out their public health advocacy, the person who wants to make a difference in the world, and engage with this idea of how do we communicate better the uncertainty in our lives, and how do we work with this and become comfortable with it? If we do a rollback experiment, thought experiment, we take time back, we let it roll forward again, would I end up being in front of you giving this talk today, or would it look something different? Chances are probably pretty good, very different. But as a society, we want to inoculate people against that uncertainty. A lot of people desire to feel a sense of uncertainty because we feel that will set pain and suffering aside for us. Except that in complex systems, irreducible uncertainty is a natural consequence of complex systems. So we have to learn how to work with it. So this is what gets me up in the morning. It it's what gets me to work. It's why I take on hard questions like, when do we stop treatments? And contrary to the original uh, title, I don't have answers, and I have a lot of questions. So for example, how do we communicate the uncertainty in our research? We use words like confidence intervals, credible intervals, likelihood ratios, and very few people outside of the scientific tribe really get those. How do we design policy, which is intended to create certainty, to be responsive to the change that comes from an irreducibly uncertain world. Every time we run an experiment, we're trying an idea out on a complex system. We all never know what that counterfactual was. That rollback says, if we go forward, it's likely going to have looked pretty different. And when people want certainty, how do we support the honesty of the uncertainty of what we know? How do we create a sense of safety around the honesty of that uncertainty so that accountability doesn't become a bludgeon? And when we feel certain, what exactly is that? What is that experience? And what do we need to change about our own behaviors? So we've had a lot of examples in all of our own lives, professionally and personally, where misplaced certainty created a loss of trust because we got it wrong when we thought we had our estimate as best we knew. So I have a considered philosophy, and I'm still considering it. I personally think what we do is we treat pain, loss, uncertainty, fear and anxiety that come from that. And what we do is do palliative care. So it's crucially important that we engage with the question of how do we deal with uncertainty and have I at all encouraged you to join me in thinking about what to do? <laughs> <laughs>